let's speak something interesting about english today of course anything that we speak about english sounds interesting i would like to touch on one special concept today on spellings when it comes to spoken english english seems very easy so many people speak english very fluently but when it comes to writing written english it sounds a little complicated <clears throat> one of the main reasons for such complication is the presence of silent letters in english word spellings what are silent letters in simple language a silent letter is one which is a part of the spelling but which is not a part of the pronunciation that means we include the letter in the spelling but we do not say it out when we pronounce that word <clears throat> so many such words we have in english one of the most popular examples is the word psychology when we take the word psychology the spelling of the word is p s y c h o l o g y but if you look at the pronunciation of the word we don't call it as psychology p never makes a sound in the word we just start with yes sai yes y c h o l o g y the obvious question the logical question that arises is when p is not pronounced when we do not speak out p what is the need for having the p in the spelling of the word there are so many questions that confuse students there are so many words which have silent letters in english let's see in this video what are silent letters where did they come from why is it necessary to have silent letters in english is there any way we can avoid we can eliminate silent letters from english and there are so many other interesting facts about silent letters let's see some of the rules where they are used how they are used how can we identify silent letters let's find answers for so many such questions in this video let's go reason number 1 why do we need silent letters in english before that i would just like to tell you one point when we speak about languages we call them phonemic any language is based on the phonemes that is the sounds the smallest sounds that we make in english or in any other language always it is speech first then the written english when human started speaking they had to be written in some forms that's when they created letters words sentences and so on letters form the basis here can we capture all the sounds in the available set of letters in any language we have different sets of letters indian alphabet system is different and the western alphabet system is different when it comes to english we know that english alphabet has only 26 letters out of which we have five vowels and remaining 21 consonants but when it comes to indian languages we have so many vowels and so many consonants in the languages this concept of having lesser number of letters a fewer number of letters in english makes it very much necessary for some of the letters to have multiple sounds it's something like this that is we have only three teachers and we have five subjects to teach which obviously makes it very much necessary for any two teachers to teach multiple subjects either two subjects or one teacher may have to teach three subjects so this is how when we have lesser number of resources it becomes very very much necessary for us for some of them for some of the resources to take more burden this is what happens here english has only 26 letters but there are 44 sounds to make and in english one more uh, way of looking at it is some of the letters make the same sound for example in some cases the letter c makes the same sound as letter k so c also makes k sound and k also makes k sound some sometimes and sometimes the letter c itself makes multiple sounds like s and k whatever it is i just wanted to tell you one point that is we have lesser number of uh, uh, letters in english alphabet we have more sounds to make this creates a need for one letter to handle multiple sounds then when it comes to the phonemic phonemes of a language english is said to be less phonemic that is 
the way the words are pronounced is different from the way the words are spelled. The spelling is sometimes different from the, how they are pronounced. This is majorly because of the inclusions of again these silent letters. Believe me, there are nearly 60% of English, English words which have silent letters. We may just take some very popular examples like psychology, like walking, so many other examples. But so many letters, there are so many words which have silent letters. E is one such letter which is silent in most of the words. Usually in most of the words where E comes at the end, E remains silent. I can give you so many examples. For example, if you take kite, K-I-T-E, we have the letter K which makes K sound, I which makes I sound, T which makes T sound and E which doesn't make any sound. We just call it as kite. Our pronunciation stops at T, kite. We do not make the sound of E anywhere. We do not call it as kite T or we, not, we do not call it as kite A, anything. We just stop the pronunciation of the word at kite T. Then, what was the need for having that E at the end? This is very important uh, aspect to understand. We had the word K-I-T already, which means kit. <clears throat> now, by adding E, we are making it an entirely different word. The pronunciation of I is changing because of the introduction of the letter E at the end of the word. Earlier, it was K-I-T, kit. It has a different meaning. Now, we have added the letter E. It has become K-I-T-E and the word is different now. The introduction of E is making a difference for the pronunciation of the word. Earlier, it was kit. K was k, I was pronounced as E, T was pronounced as T. K, E, T, kit. Now, the pronunciation of K remains same. I becomes I, T is T, and E is, because E is added at the end, the pronunciation of I has changed here. Hence, we need to understand one thing those silent letters do not make any sounds by themselves they influence the sound made by other letters in the word i was making a different sound before in the let in the word kit now i is making a different sound after we have added e at the end of the letter it has become kite i has changed so we need to understand silent letters are not really silent <clears throat> even though they do not make any sound they make other letters to make a different sound in the letter. So, just because we have fewer number of letters in English, we need to introduce silent letters to some of the existing words to change the sound of the other letters in English. We have so many such uh, examples. We just have uh, to say, uh, we let us take the word sign. Yes, I, N, it was just sin at the beginning, but because we add the letter G, in the middle, S-I-G-N, though the letter G doesn't make any sound, it is just a silent letter, but the pronunciation of the sound of I will change. Earlier it was just called sin, now because, of, because we have introduced G, it has become sign. G doesn't make any sound, but it has changed the pronunciation of the word. Hence, silent letters, though do, they do not make any sound, they influence the sound of the other letters in English. This is one of the reasons why silent letters are in introduced because we want the same letter to make different sounds because as I explained already we have only 26 letters and those 26 letters have to make multiple sounds to make them make different sounds we will take the help of other letters which are totally not related but we add them in the spelling to make other letters make a different sound Reason number two, when we speak about languages, we have different branches within a language. We call phonology, which means the study of sounds within the language, the sound aspects of language. The very word phone means sound. Phonology is one and second one is orthology. Orthology is all about symbols, all about letters, how a language is written. So phonology is about pronunciation, about speaking, about sounds. When it comes to orthology, it's about the symbols, it's about the 
sound it's about the representation of that in different forms of symbols generally letters how the language is written when it comes to english as we know english has taken words from so many different languages it may be from sanskrit it may be from french it may be from german it may be from uh, spanish any other language here now the written part of the language the orthology of the language has stopped centuries ago but phonology of the language has been changing day by day so this leads to the confusion or this leads to one more problem that we feel that there is a mismatch between how we speak and how we spell a word probably in the earlier days the spelling of the word was same as the uh, pronunciation of the word because we have stopped changing the spellings but we have continued to change the pronunciation of the words as most of you may already know that even though we speak english we have different english in different parts of the world we call it as american english we call it as british english we have australian english and the best of all is the neutral english so based on the pronunciation in different regions we just call them as different english uh, styles so now the pronunciation of the same word is different in different uh, countries or different regions but when it comes to spelling it remains the same for example uh, the word father is pronounced in a different way in britain and it is pronounced in a different way in america so almost there is no sound for r in the word father when it comes to america i mean when it comes to britain english but when it comes to american english uh, if the same word father r is rolled more so the sounds are different in different regions of uh, the world hence i just want to say one thing that is the reason why one of the reasons why uh, the spoken english is different from written english is because of this particular gap the phonology of the language has been changing continuously but the orthology of the english has stopped long back we are not changing the spellings but we are just changing the way they are spoken hence we see some silent letters in english uh, that is one reason why we have silent letters in english reason number 3 <clears throat> why do we have silent letters in english it is something a continuation of one, my previous point i was telling that the phonology of english has changed but the orthology has remained the same one of the reasons for this particular uh, reason is the importing of words from different languages english has been shamelessly taking words from all over the world that's why it has the richest vocabulary in the world the language which has the richest vocabulary in the world you just take for example so many etymologists that is those who uh, mm, try to find the birth of the I mean, words or where it has been taken from so they just connect the words which are present in english from various sources for example the father and mother might have been taken from sanskrit uh, matru and pitru similarly there are so many words which are taken from sanskrit there are uh, different words taken from spanish french russian japanese chinese where not hence when we when the words come from the other languages what what is basically happening is english is taking the spelling of the word but english is not taking the pronunciation of the word from the other languages this is creating a mismatch between the spelling and the pronunciation of the word for example uh, a king or an official at the higher level is generally called as tsar in uh, russian russian language it can be <coughs> T S T S A R or T Z A R, it it depends. Now, when it comes from the other language, the word has been taken into English and we use it in English, but we do not pronounce T here. We just call it as Sar, Zar. Similarly, when it comes to the letter Tsunami, the Japanese word, we just write the letter, write write the spelling of the word as T S U N A M I, but we just pronounce it as tsunami we do not call it tsunami similarly there are so many words <coughs> which are taken from other languages like maybe german language maybe french language etc but 
when we pronounce them we just pronounce them keeping some letters silent what perhaps happens in most of the other languages is the words which have all the letters all the letters are pronounced in the word but english is one such language or the native speakers of english are the people who want the language to be spoken effortlessly without much effort they just want to speak there should not be much effort in speaking english so if you look at it most of the english words are easy to speak that is uh, there are very few words which are tongue twisting or which are very hard to pronounce otherwise most of the english words are very easy to speak out and like in any of the languages especially if you take the language sanskrit there are so many tongue twisting words so the words which are really hard to remember which are very hard to use but english doesn't follow that concept english usually has converted most of the complicated words into easier pronunciation and when it comes to american english now it has been even making the spellings easy it is eliminating all the letters which are not necessary for example we know the word is c o l o u r the word color in britain english uh, british english but when it comes to american english they have just removed u and they have made it as c o l o r there are so many such words where the spellings have been simplified but basic british english has been simplifying the pronunciations but not the spellings that's what we follow as i was telling you there are so many words which are taken from the foreign languages it can be from german it can be from uh, for example the word knee k n e e so we do not pronounce knee we do not pronounce it as <coughs> so similarly the word uh, psyche p s y c h e these are the words which are taken from french and german but we just remove the letters which were pronounced in the which were pronounced originally in their native languages but when we imported them to english we stopped pronouncing some of the letters just because we just wanted to create make it easy p means uh, the british so <clears throat> the people the native english speakers the british wanted to make the pronunciation easy so they just imported the spellings but they did not pronounce the letters which were creating it difficult for the pronunciation hence this mismatch has created the presence of silent letters in english <clears throat> fourth and the last reason <clears throat> this may sound so funny i am not even sure whether it is true or false but i just thought i would share with you because it 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 is a, a great fiction kind of very f- fictional aspect to the silent letters of english i am not sure if it is uh, true or false i just want to share with you in earlier days <clears throat> uh english was limited unlike uh, today's uh, english or today's sources we have english is printed on internet on the books or where not so we have different sources for english here so whatever we want we just get it from different sources but earlier days we used to have very limited sources for referring to any book or any text which is printed churches or such religious religious centers in the western countries especially in britain considered to be the holiest and the most Uh, authentic uh, places for circulating any documents okay it can be any script it can be any document they were considered to be the most authenticated uh, places to circulate so there were no many printing presses and there there were no many any other ways of uh, publishing any content <clears throat> during such places during such cases uh, they started converting the manuscripts the people who had written something uh, by hand on the papers they started printing them uh, and especially the holy books especially the scriptures they started printing them and when they started printing uh, obviously the task was given to the typesetters i mean those who work in printing presses what we call uh, unlike in today's uh, screen printing or computerized uh, typing so as we did not have them so we just they just had to uh, set it so we call it as type setting or we just call it as print setting so they had some nails which had to be inserted in the grooves and they had to be printed on the paper now 
the typesetters were actually the very unskilled laborers without having much knowledge in english on, or in any language but one thing was their wages their remuneration was fixed their salary was fixed <clears throat> based on the number of pages they print every day the number of page pages they set every day the print setting or the type setting they do every day uh, it is believed that for one reason that they started inserting some letters unnecessarily in some of the words just to increase the length of the text so i mean i'm not i'm really not sure and this cannot be completely taken as an authentic information but this is how it is that is it is said that uh, these print setters who are unskilled laborers and who just wanted to who were little greedy and wanted to earn more by just adding some unwanted letters in english type setting so even uh, even though some words were given they started inserting some letters i'm sure there must be someone who used to cross check i'm not sure if they cross checked or not but they started inserting some unwanted letters while type setting so that the length of the page increases the length of the printed content increases so that they would get more uh, remuneration or more salary for that this sounds to be very silly and very uh, funny but this could be one of the reasons if you believe uh, for introduce introduction of silent letters so that's how some of the letters got added to some words which were no way related to uh, this actual pronunciation of the word <laughs> very simple rule for silent b is its occurrence after yam whenever usually b comes after yam we don't pronounce it there are so many examples like comb limb so we just pronounce them without b the next letter is d the d sound of d is usually not pronounced when the letter d is followed by g e there are so many words like pledge dodge grudge judge etc where we do not pronounce d e is one interesting letter in english the real fact about e is this is a letter which is silent in most of the letters in english the e does not make any sound when it comes usually at the end of any word but it changes the sound of other letters in english h i d is just hid but when e is added at the end it becomes hide it is changing the sound of i in the word hide when e is added at the end of a word hop becomes hope rit becomes right sit becomes sight cut becomes cute and so on k and n do not like each other but k doesn't argue with n it just becomes silent whenever k occurs before n k just becomes silent there are so many words like knife knee no need and so on yearly is another interesting letter that becomes silent when it comes before letters like k m and so on but one thing that we must observe is if l is followed by another vowel generally it makes sound there are so many examples like calm half talk what should folk bum and so on these are some of the reasons why we have silent letters in english and these are some of the rules where silent letters occur in english but we just have a question i will learn completely about the silent letters never english continues to be mysterious and continues to be interesting let's try to explore something more ourselves let's meet with some other interesting topic next time